in three, two, one. John, am I live? You're live, sir. Awesome. Hey, guys. Uh, welcome to our seventh uh, live show, our live wheelhouse show. I'm really excited about today's show, like every other show. But today's show, um, we're going to have on Ryan Cotter from BDMC, as well as the Real Estate Rumble. Really excited to talk about the crazy stuff that happened at the Rumble last week. Also got a good buddy of mine, longtime buddy of mine, jujitsu training partner, a realtor at Main Street, close friend, Johnny. I nicknamed him Johnny Roto Johnny, but it's Johnny Roto Johnis. Um, and then, of course, we got John here. John, I got a bone to pick with you because I keep bragging or uh, in envy of your brick wall behind you and Correct. your flag. You added a flag. Correct. And now behind Cotter, everybody's going to see a really cool wheelhouse netcast sign. And then behind Johnny, there's a really cool wheelhouse netcast sign. But behind me, there's still nothing. It's still just plain. I get, I get no love in the studio. Well, we can look at that as... We're trying to dress up Cotter because he needs a little help, or we could dress it up as, you know, he is one of the stars of the show, whereas you you can carry it all by yourself. You don't Aww. need anything. It's all you all the time. Uh, whatever makes you feel better, we'll go Aww. with that because you're in front of the camera most of the time. That's, uh, you just want everybody to focus on me. See, Ryan? They just want me, not a sign behind me. Um, anyways, um, really excited, but I'm going to start with Cotter today. Um, thanks for coming on again to chat about the Rumble. You want me to kind of explain the craziness that happened at the Rumble leading up to it, and then we'll get into it? Yeah, I'm going to be very uh, – I'll give you guys the abbreviated version of what happened, not the lengthy version because it took about three hours worth of going back and forth to actually make this thing work out. But um, about one hour to the event going live last Thursday, somebody – we think we know who it is. I'm not going to name the person yeah. – called IDFPR – and said that the real estate rumble was not licensed to host a boxing full contact fighting event. So about an hour to the event, we're all downstairs scrambling, getting everything ready for guests to come in. Ryan comes and grabs me and he's like, uh, we need an attorney upstairs right now. <laughs> so I was like, all right, what could this be? So we go up into the um, Park West office and shout out to the Park West for being so amazing to us. Um, Teresa and everybody there were, were amazing. I mean, just letting us use their office space to try to make all of this work out was amazing. They um, got a call from IDFPR and one of their attorneys said, well, you guys are not licensed under the Full Contact Martial Arts Act of Illinois. And because of that, since you're not licensed through USA Boxing, you can't host your event. And we're like, uh-oh because we got about an hour before doors open here. And we started to brainstorm a little bit. The person who was the attorney for the state was very kind, worked with us after hours. Um, I did a lot of reading of this act in a couple uh, couple hours time, came up with a, uh, not so much a loophole, but kind of where our event fit into the act. We, we kind of figured that out, reached back out to the state. They said, yeah, that works if you guys host the event that way. We didn't announce any winners or losers at the event it was deemed a exhibition bout um and uh kind of went on and had the event a lot of things transpired we had to make sure that the park west was protected because if the park west went on and held an event that wasn't supposed to be uh sanctioned by the state it could have gotten in trouble too so we had a lot of legal work back and forth a lot of teamwork amongst um, everybody, I know Greg was up there, Pekarski, shout out to him. Yep. You and I were in the office, Albron and John were downstairs trying to make sure everything worked. Everybody came in on time. Everybody started to drink. The really cool thing was we got everybody an extra hour of open bar. So Johnny will tell you when he, by the time he showed up, um, he was thinking he was going to have one drink, but he had, you know, an hour and one drink. So, um, that was really cool. Big shout out to the entire team at the Real Estate Rumble, the Park West, and then everybody who came had a great time because we had amazing fights, raised a ton of money for charity, and it was a really good time. I mean, I was sweating. I don't sweat normally. Like I just, <laughs> even when I work out, I sweat a little bit. I was sweating bullets up there in the Park West, but it's it proves that an amazing team can do incredible things even under incredible pressure. So shout out to you too, Ryan. I mean, it was one of those things where all of us came together. The coaches were fantastic. The fighters were fantastic. Um, and I'm just, I was the most nervous I had ever been as an attorney. And that's crazy because I've gone into, I've probably done 12, 13 trials. And going into a trial, you're prepared for things. So you're not that nervous because you're prepared. Here, we had a call an hour before and then we just had to figure out what to do in real time and that was pretty nerve wracking but also made me really happy that we got it done yeah uh, I think everybody uh, looking back uh, as I talked to the people involved in the the war room effort as I call it 
wish we had a video camera going on. Like, yeah. you know, seeing like our, our, our emotions, like being like uh, portrayed, we probably, they'd have to do it like, you know, undercover boss and we couldn't see the cameras because if there was a camera, we'd be like, get the camera out of my face. <laughs> yeah. <well>. Um, <laughs> but like even Greg, Elbron, I mean, it went from an evening of everybody yelling and swearing at me to the end of the evening where I, everyone would just give me hugs. Yeah. You know, and I was given plenty of hugs, but uh, it was, it was a, a interesting cycle that we went through. You gave me a hug and a kiss on the cheek. It was, hey, was, it was dangerously close to the lips. <laughs> it was like right here, kisses. but it was, it was a very heartfelt kiss on the cheeks when we finally said, it's a go. Yeah. So when we sent the bout list to the state and the state said, you guys are good to go. Park West gave us the green light too. And we're able to run into the room and get the fighters together and say, guys, you got to go through the doctor check. Now we're a green light, mm. which actually isn't so bad because I mean, Johnny will come on in a second and we'll chat about fighting in general, but you've boxed before and uh, boxed for a long time. Most fighting events don't start exactly at the time they're supposed to start. So we were kind of within the bounds of when normal fighting events no, start. You, you look at you know, most uh, major events, and I'll say it's a major event because we don't have, you know, and we're close to a thousand people. There's logistics, you know, the artist, you know, which, you know, we'll say you were the artist, you know, sometimes it's just like hanging out in the green room, right? Yeah. You know, drinking his covassier until, you know, you know, he feels the crowd is ready for the event. Yeah. So if we want to take a positive, you know, spin on it, we really just wanted to get the crowd amped up for these fights. And I think, yeah. I think they were. Wait, so all of that going back and forth, you guys were just messing with me. It was an actor on the other side of the you phone. We're just were getting people MVP. excited. You were the MVP of the event. Me and Greg have said that uh, numerous times. Greg is incredibly energized now. He's like, I can't wait to take this to you know all five cities. I was like, we we gotta we gotta get this going even more you know faster than we originally planned. It's like we have so much you know um, goodwill out there now, so much street cred that you know we should really. You know, capitalizes on this. Um, big, huge shout out to Jeremy from Big Brothers Big Sisters. Big so shout out. He he was there. He knew what was going on. Yeah, you know, an individual like him, CEO of an organization that size, he only has like a lot of time to be at each event to speak. And you know, I looked at him like, you know, a certain amount of time into it, not being one hundred percent confident that we're still going to pull it off. And I was like, do you have to take off? He's like, I'm not leaving you guys. Yeah, I love that. And shout out to a lot of people we spoke to. How love the real estate rumble is and what we're doing came through so much when we were on the phone. So Greg and I were on the phone. I know you were too, but there was a point where Greg and I had three, we only owned two phones, but we had three phones somehow going yeah. in that office. Teresa, Teresa was helping us yeah. out and we had Alderman on the phone. I won't name which ones, but they were really upset about what mm -hmm. had happened to us. And had they had more time, they would have done whatever they could. But this was 6 p.m. You know, and we needed them to do something in a scramble. But they were blown away by the charity. Um, shout out to Brian Bernadoni from yep. um, CAR. He's government affairs director at CAR. And he um, he's the... He's the guy who knows everybody and really pushes for realtor rights. Um, he's such a um, influential figure at CAR and throughout the state of Illinois. And he also is just a big advocate for realtors and charity. And he was on the phone with us and he didn't have to take a call, but shout out to him because he took the call, was trying to hook Greg and I up with anybody he could. But what was incredible was everybody we explained the situation to and then explained the charity to was so much wanting to help us right. that it energized me too. I yeah. said, you know, we're doing such an incredible thing. Let's kick butt in LA. Let's kick butt in Miami and make mm. this a national thing because we raised a lot of money for the kids. And I think that if anything, it let us know that the strength of the team behind the Rumble is incredible and the cause for the Rumble is incredible. Yeah. I mean, I, I was thoroughly impressed. I, I think there was varying opinions or the percentage of us being able to pull it off. Yeah. You know, um, I had a, I had, you know, a somewhat lower, uh, percentage than Greg, but you guys were actually you know, you know, in the room more. I was running downstairs, you know, playing PR. Yeah. And then you know, we all had like two phones. Like I, I took one of the big brother, big sisters, you know, person's phone and said, let's just, you know, let's just call everybody we know and just get, let's get some movement. Um, yeah. And Al Brown was telling jokes. I think he got on the mic. I, it was like such an effort. I was running downstairs to make sure that everything is, you know, going well. And it was, uh, it, it, we knew it was a mad scramble, but it felt like the people who were there enjoying themselves were just having a good time. I mean, everybody was drinking, having a really good time, and open bar got extended an hour. I, I was upstairs when that announcement went off, and I hear everybody cheering, so I, everybody was having a good time. It was a mad scramble behind the scenes, and honestly, it was, it was again, such an incredible team effort, and um, 
I mean, it, we pulled it off. Three I mean, more. Really uh, cool. again, again, you said you mentioned Elbron. Elbron. You know, my, my brother, um, Lalo Baez and David Diaz. Yes. Uh, Quick. Yep. You know, everybody. Trainers. Yeah. Um, the guys from from all the boxing gyms. You see Wrigley. Yep. That, that just came out, support, gave us, you know, you know encouragement to keep on going. Yeah. Uh, I think everybody got closer. Like everybody now is like really, really close, and that's awesome. Yeah, you had. Uh, I mean, there was a time where Lalo and David Diaz were giving us advice on what to do, and mm-hmm. you know, David's boxed Manny Pacquiao. So how cool to get advice from a guy who's an ex world champion who's sitting there trying to do everything passionately to help us too. He was on a phone call, you know, trying to help us give us advice and stuff, and um, it was really awesome to see the love. And then the fighters when they. Um, uh, Brendan's watching right now, and what a fight between him and Phelan, by the way. Awesome. Uh, shout out to that fight. Those guys Great were fight. throwing Great. hard for the entire time. Yeah. But uh, the fighters were patient. They, When they found out it's a green light mm-hmm. to fight each other, they got really excited, and um, most of them were really happy about the ending there. Yeah, yeah. This year, we're, yeah, because of the exhibition style, all the fighters are getting championship belts. I know you're upset about that because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't necessarily get my own. That was free three years ago, but the rumble has grown since then. So yeah, everybody is going to get championship belts. Yeah, I said at the beginning, they're all champions. They all raised a bunch of money for the kids. Can't be prouder about you know, how the event went and all the participants. So you know, very, very excited for the 2019 Chicago Real Estate Rumble. I am too. I, I was... Um... I was so exhausted at the end of that kind of back and forth, but I was so fired up. I was like, damn, I wish somebody would just drop out right now and somebody would lend me some shorts and gloves and I would go in there. So I might make a little return in 2019 as long as you can promise me a belt when I win. Oh, yeah. Now we it's a, it's, a, yeah, it's a standardized thing. Cool. Yeah. So I just have to win and then I get one. We'll see if it's exhibition style or we'll yeah, see if it's if exhibition it, style. I guess I get everybody one wins. Everybody wins. And, yeah, everybody you know, wins. Everyone, I mean, everyone that goes into the, the match they're not losing, right? Everybody's trying to, you know, I think we talked about, you know, the way we held it. People were going, you know, 95, 100%, even though we suggested, you know, you know just because it's an exhibition style, you don't have to do that. Right. But everybody wanted to put on a show. Wanted to put on a show. Yeah. And that's the cool thing. I mean, even when two people are friends, I mean, like you look at uh, Brennan and Joe, they are good buddies, friends, and they've been friends for a long time. And they went out there and they went hard um, to put on a show. And I, Shout out to Joe because when I saw them and, and to, I hope Joe doesn't get mad at me for this, but it's it's more a compliment than anything else. Yeah. When they got in the ring and I took one good look at Nestor, I was like, oh man, this like I mean he's jacked. Yeah. I mean, and and Joe's in great shape, but I looked at them and I was like, oh man, between the age gap and then the look between the two, and you can't judge a boxing match or a fight of any sort by just looks. <laughs> I was like, this is gonna be bad, and then. Joe was tough as nails, and you could tell he was letting Nestor kind of tire himself out a little bit yeah. and then throw back. But, you know, Joe was saying, he's like, man, when he hit me, I could really feel it because he's a big, strong guy. Yeah. But those two fought so hard. So, and they're good friends. They mm-hmm. were really good buddies. Yeah. So that was cool. It was cool to see him take pictures. Like, uh, even Nestor had pictures of um, him and Joe and their, one of their mutual buddies on his, you know, LinkedIn. He had a couple of nice hashtags, like, you know, for the kids, concussion. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully nobody got one of those. I saw, I think one of them had like a little bit of a shiner, but yeah. they um, they did awesome. And guys, by the way, some people are watching and commenting. As always, if you guys have any comments or questions for Ryan and then Johnny when he gets on, ask away. I'll be able to periodically check the questions and uh, ask these guys. But yeah, I'm happy. Do, do we know when LA is going to be? Um, it's going to be, we believe, November 12th. Okay, it's the second. We actually I t- I, that's that's Thursday. wrong. I think it's, I think it's the, it's the second Thursday in November, and I think yes. the first November falls on a first, so it might be like the seventh or eighth. You were talking about you know coming out there, and you had some dates. Uh, and I was actually sure. looking at my calendar now yeah. because I have to fly into L.A. Ooh, so it's the eighth. I got to fly into the to L.A. on the fifteenth. Oh, maybe I don't. Maybe it's the eighth I fly in. Actually, I think it is the eighth I fly in. You know, we got a show going on here, right? Yeah, no, I, do. I, have, to, I have to check <laughs> it's this not out. About your right, calendar. Well, I, uh, actually, Johnny's going to be there too. To, I think going Wisconsin Dell next <laughs> yeah. week. Well, Johnny's going to be there too. We have a mutual friend, yeah. uh, old guest on the show, Lawrence Dunning. Shout out to him. He's in Hawaii right now, topless surfing or something. But he is getting married in Tahiti. And to get to Tahiti, you have to stop in LA. Mm-hmm. And our stop is actually Thursday. So maybe I'll come a day or two early. Mm-hmm. And this works out perfect for me. And perfect for you. Maybe Johnny and I'll. Both come down for it. 
Fantastic. Maybe we'll get Johnny to box it. And then Miami, we are thinking um, starting up the promotion in August and having that in February of 2019. Cool. Boom. January, start promoting here. Kind of you know, just yeah. keep, keep the keep the wheels rolling. Awesome. Do we know um, anybody in LA who's going to kind of help us push it through again this year? Because last year we had um, the uh, the broke agent. So for the realtors watching, you guys probably follow the mm-hmm. broke agent, which is a really funny handle on Instagram and Facebook. And he was pivotal in trying to get us hooked up with the right people there. Is he still on this year? He's still on. Uh, I think he's moved into. Uh, I, f- I forget what he's doing, but he's still a great friend. You know, I love uh, love Erica a bunch. We've just recently, I've had a bunch of people reach out to me about like, hey, what happened? And tell them about everything that we're doing. And then I'll, I'll mention that we have an LA and a, a Miami that we're, we're trying to produce. And that they're like, you know, my brother is a producer in LA. You know, my cousin is blah, blah, blah. And so the, the people are asking me for you know, collateral material that they could forward to them yeah. so they could even push it more. We got Na Rep that's big and in, in, you know, you know, big fans of... Country. Fighting, yeah, and then um, Freddie Roach's gym, Wild Card, yeah, they helped us put on last year's event, so cool. we're excited to be you know, teamed up with them again. I got a really good buddy of mine, AJ, um, who's a jiu-jitsu world champion black belt. He's actually training his boxing out of Freddie Roach's gym right now, and he's moved on to LA. So um, AJ watches the show from time to time. So I'm gonna reach out to AJ and maybe link us up. He's a very, very famous professional jiu-jitsu uh, competitor. So we'll sh- get him hooked up. Avisha is a friend of mine, old long time family friend of mine from when I was a little kid. She's a realtor in Miami. So I started thinking about that stuff too. And if anybody's listening and you have contacts in LA or Miami and can hook us up with them, that would help because we're very successful in Chicago because everybody here is very passionate about it. Obviously we'd be passionate in LA and Miami too, but if there's any sort of person you can put us in touch with that might have an in with a lot of realtors, um, lenders, construction folks, venues, boxers, we're, anybody. Yeah. We're actually looking for, you know, partners in LA and Miami that want to the template that we've created is, is very it's very simple and useful for somebody in LA and somebody you know in Miami to say hey I want to be the the front person for the LA version of the real estate rumble yeah you know, I want to help you guys out I love you know what you're about I want to be about this as well and you know um, I'll be I'll be a front person and yeah. we want to give you you know, all the tools to do that and get all the credit, you know, you be getting, you know, we, we'll stay behind the scenes. We're only in the beginning, the front part, because we just don't have that perfect partner yet. We should, um, shout out to all the Persians in LA, because I'm Persian. There's probably a lot of my people down there. there are. You know what we should try to do is get in touch with the realtors from the Shaws of Sunset, the TV show, because mm-hmm. those guys have a big following down in LA and they're realtors. I mean, they started off as real estate agents. So I actually think I know a few people that know Mike. So maybe there's a way we can get in touch with them and see if one of them would kind of get behind it or share a post or two because they have hundreds of thousands, millions of followers on yeah. social media now. So that might not be a bad idea because I just thought about that as we were talking back and forth. They might be a good good fit for us. Absolutely. Again, more the more the merrier. Yeah. So if anybody knows any of those people down there, please. Uh, Million dollar sh- listing. Yeah. I guess the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I don't watch that. <laughs> it's not one of the ones I watch. And I'm not lying about that. Sometimes you'll lie about a show you don't watch. Yeah. I watch it. But maybe Johnny does. Do you watch it? No. No. Um, cool. I'm going to bring Johnny on to now, and then we'll have kind of a roundtable discussion. He was at the uh, Real Estate Rumble as well, has always been a supporter. He, you've been coming to the Wayans for a couple years in the event for a couple years. Even before he was a realtor, he was coming. Um, thanks for coming on the show, Johnny. Thanks for having me. Um, Johnny and I have been buddies for a long time. He was um, at the jiu-jitsu gym that I started off at Valco BJJ. Shout out to Jay again. And funny enough, um, Johnny, Zach, and my girlfriend were roommates at the time, so I met my uh, girlfriend through Johnny as well. Um, shout out to Jamie. She should, <laughs> I saw she's watching, but she should be at a um, physical therapist for her neck right now. Um, so what did you think of the Rumble before we get into real estate? Uh, I thought it was done really well. They had a few sections. We had open bar. I um, saw a lot of people I knew, a lot of people I haven't seen in a while. It was another excuse to you know just kind of say hi to people. I came in almost two hours late. Um, I had things to do. I was leaving for Boston the next morning, so I was getting ready for that trip and uh, thought I was going to miss most of it, but I had to come out, and then I get a text from Mo, and then I get 10 texts from Mo, and then I get 15 from him complaining about you know what's going on, and then he's just trying to scramble and figure things out. I'm like, should I even come? He's like, yeah, come on out. So I showed up, and I got in there, perfect timing. I 
30 minutes later, the, the rumble started, and uh, I had free open bar for an extra hour longer. We, uh, we purposely held the rumble for you because we knew you were running late, so we said, hey, everybody, let's just hold off until he gets there. And you were up in the VIP section, which, by the way, Cotter, was awesome this time. Yeah. I'm jealous because I didn't really get to hang out in the VIP section. I was just running up and down. Right. They had a masseuse. Shoulder had, rubs. Yeah, it's crazy. That was like a legit, that was really nice. So for people next year, get VIP tickets because VIP is pretty awesome. Yeah. Did you have to be a sponsor to be up there in VIP? Yes, you did. Oh, okay. So sponsor next year and then you will you and your friends get to hang out in VIP. Johnny snuck in there somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Private bar. Yeah. I think we had um, uh, treats, cupcakes, candies. You know, very, very, you know, very, very sweet. I did not but have a lounge, s- a little lounge area. Yeah, the lounge was nice. Yeah. I didn't get a sip of liquor. I had like three sips of water that night. I was like sipping on water. I know John was the same way. Running up and down, up and down. We were trying to get the fighters out, so I didn't even really get a ton of liquor. Um, Maybe we'll have you boxing it next year. Johnny fought MMA. He's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu, so we have to get him somebody who's good because Johnny's heavy-handed and he knows how to box, so he'll beat up the average realtor. Do you think, like, I mean, we talked about Bide and um, um, Mr. Vargas' fight. That was good. That was a good fight. Yeah. That was a good fight. Yeah. yeah. I mean, B- Bide is good. He had boxed before. He hits hard. He's strong. He's big. He's got... <laughs> I-, I sparred with Bide. I mean, I'm 100... I was 155 pounds. He was about 250. Yeah. Um, so that was a little bit difficult to overcome. But he's got legs that... I, I know John's... Tree trunks. Him. I mean, it, it kind of like Johnny. Johnny's got these legs. They're like that. Um, and he was powerful. And the guy who was boxing, trained by David Diaz, um, was really good too. Yeah. Yeah. That That's more up to Johnny's speed of yeah. boxing. So, yeah, I, I think both those guys are coming back next year. Yeah. yeah. I think they'd have some trouble with Johnny, but yeah. that would be more up Johnny's kind of pace. So there you go. We just yeah. uh, we figured out a way <laughs> so, to get so, you. So the first ticket yesterday? <laughs> now you got we, we made fight. the first bout. He hasn't agreed yet, but we made <laughs> yeah. it for him. That's how it works. That's how it works. <laughs> I, I don't know. When I go, when I fight, I go all in. So I would end up cutting weight, you know, <laughs> running five miles a day. You don't need to cut weight. The weights just have to be kind of close. Oh, just kind of. All right. So I just, uh, yeah, my last fight, I lost 30 pounds to make weight for it in uh, three months' time, you know, running five miles a day, training three times a day. Mm-hmm. I'll just quit real estate, you know. No, don't do that. He's not you know, boxing. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> Johnny. Uh, don't quit real estate. Johnny is with Main Street, and um, it's been really awesome to watch Johnny Go from a brand new agent a year ago, right? You're about a year. Uh, yeah. uh, April 20th. It was, was a year. So a year into watching how successful he's become in a year. And I tell realtors, and it's any business, the first six months of your business is kind of a learning curve time. Anything that you get is almost low-hanging fruit. And then it's what you do after that that really matters. And then watching you go from a brand new realtor to learning as much as you did to now he's teaching stuff in our office is is incredible. So... Let's chat about that. How's the uh, first year of real estate? So the first year, um, it was definitely difficult. Um, I had 10 years of trading experience before this. So I um, worked from home for myself, no clients. uh, So I didn't have anyone to speak to or answer to or anything. And so it was a big change of pace. But um, I really enjoy real estate. I weirdly like enjoy real estate. It's odd. I don't think people, too many people do. But um, I like it. I have family that's in the flipping business and they had been kind of asking me to get into it. They needed help as well. And, um, you know, I just have know a lot of people born and raised in Chicago. So uh, I thought I'd use, you know, just my real estate experience and knowledge and, um, you know, get out of trading, trading kind of uh, shifted regulation, everything like that. But um, I don't know, you just grow, you learn more and the more you're consistent, the more that you show up, uh, people start to notice, friends start to notice, colleagues start to notice. I um, I was in the office every day. Yeah, so you're, you're in the office more than anybody. Yeah, so I think colleagues were, every time they needed someone help or they had too much business or needed to pass off some work, they were like, oh, Johnny, Johnny's always there. Like, he'll take care of it. Johnny on the spot. Yeah. Johnny, Johnny's on the spot. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing, though. I mean, I think what most people don't realize is you said two key things. One, you always showed up, and two, you were consistent. So if you want to be the – I equate this all the time for realtors, and I know I have a lot of realtors listening. Being a well, – let's take like a fitness person versus a business person. If you want to have like fitness model abs, if you want to be a guy who's on the front of like a muscle and fitness – Getting there is not, it's difficult, but it's simple. You eat right, you work out, and you get there. It, there's no rocket science behind it. It's just people don't stay motivated and consistent for long enough to get there. They'll do it for one month, two months, 
all, I mean, there's subparts to becoming in shape. Evan Shai's probably watching this like, hey, idiot. Like, those aren't <laughs> the only two things you do. But he's, like, take Evan, for example. He, a, he's a successful business person, but also looks fantastic. He never misses a beat. He's nonstop consistent. Where I fluctuate in my consistency with my fitness, it's the same thing with a business person. The reason not everybody can look like an Evan and not everybody can be a millionaire in business is the same. People can figure out why and how to make money in real estate. It's very, making money in real estate simple. It's just not easy because nobody's consistent enough for a long period of time enough to become successful and be in the top one, two percent, or even the top 10%. And you've been showing up nonstop. You're the in the office more than everybody else for sure. So Main Street Realtors, if you want to, um, or any realtor, if you want to be as successful as Johnny's been in the in one year, and I always say your first year, don't even use that as a metric. Take six months and then start day one of your first year after six months because it takes time for people to notice that you're in the business and you've done that really, really well. Yeah, so I started right at the beginning of the summer season, but like you said, those first six months don't really count and mm -hmm. no one knows that. My sister bought a house the first week that I got my real estate license and did not know that I had my license. So she ended up purchasing a home. I one Nobody week else. into my life, I'm not going to say anything bad about your sister because I'll never forget. <laughs> I'll never forget at your uh, your rehearsal dinner when she thought I was mad at her about something, but it wasn't me, but it was somebody else, and she confronted me, and I was definitely afraid of your sister, and I was like, I think you got the wrong guy. It's not me. Maybe you've had one or two drinks, and just don't get mad at me. Sounds about right. Yeah. So, no, no, no comment on that one. Yeah. Um, and then the real estate market in general, I wanted to bring that up. John had um, read something on the news today, and this is not even all about the real estate market, and I'll bring Ryan in on this. But John had read something on the news today and wanted me to share it um, with the rest of you guys. It was an article about how people have been trying to leave Chicago in a very large quantity. So masses of people are leaving. I actually think, John, I've read in the past an article that said that there's no state that's had a larger exit in the last two years than Illinois. Um, what are you, and I have some, I'm gonna reserve my thoughts on why that is, but I'll ask you, what do you think of the real estate market right now? So I, I think it's pretty, um, it's still consistent and you're right, there is some exit and stuff like that, but with um, new markets tearing up, Fulton Market, some big companies coming into the area, I'm seeing some people coming in from Seattle and some other states, but you're right, in general, there isn't you know, as many people coming in, but also suburbs are kind of floating back into the city more. Yeah. Um, I under, know that my parents are on the suburbs and their market hasn't recovered and they're still getting some deals out there for flips. Um, but then they have to make sure that they know they won't sell it for what it sold before. Yeah. So there is some of that still and there's a lot of foreclosure still and they're still popping up all, all the way out in the far suburbs. And you guys are rocking it out there in the far northwest suburbs, kind of the McHenry County. Yeah, McHenry County area. But um, it's, it's... I know you don't love love driving that far, yeah. but you take the business yeah, out it's, there. I mean, a house that sold for four hundred grand in you know, 2010, 2009 or you know, right after everything kind of went... Um, we're picking up for 120. Wow! But we're even fully gutted. You know, putting in 80,000, we're only selling the mid twos. Yeah. So oh. even brand new and fresh and everything. So, so if you're looking for a bargain, move out to McKenna County. <laughs> yeah. There's um, definitely bargains out there. Ryan, what do you think about this whole people moving out of Illinois slash Chicago? Yeah, yeah. I was at a uh, uh, Chicago Association Realtor, like the you know the, the summit that they do every year, and they're doing the you know the the projections of people leaving the state. You know, and people coming into the state, you know, uh, th that's what sustained it very, you know, you know, simply is that, you know, we have a bunch of people. It's a major hub. You know, yeah. there, there are people coming in from you know, the surrounding universities and, you know, they're, you know, they're adding to the economy. And, yeah, we're losing people. We're, I mean, taxes are, they, they're, they're brutal. That's yeah. a that's a big part of it. Yeah, the property taxes. Um, there was an article that went out yesterday. Speaking of news, that was showing how the uh, tax bills just went out and the tax rates for some people have gone up fifty percent. And we got so many calls at our law firm for tax appeals in the last week or so. Shout out to Tim Massimos in my office. He's the man when it comes to tax appeals. If you guys need to appeal your taxes, give Tim a call. He's he is a wizard with taxes, and it's scaring people. And I hate that part of it. I mean. I always joke that the state and the city have my problem. They don't have an income problem, they have a spending problem. Because mm -hmm. they bring in a 
crap ton of money through sales, through property taxes, through so many different avenues. It's not a city or a state that has any issue with income coming in. They just have a shitty spending problem, yeah. which is creating a problem for us. But, but that's, I, that's the that's that's the county, yeah. Who's you know again? They're they're all yeah. intertwined. The, the county you know who feeds you know to the city and to the state. They're the ones that are you know, that are you know, riding along, yeah. riding along. Yeah, I don't have to. You know, you could shut off the spigot and yeah. let the let the, the different governments you know pull their own bootstraps or tighten their own belts. But it's just it's just you know, just kicking it down the yeah. kicking it down the road. Oh, hey, we'll, you know, we'll pass this. We'll pass this. They're plugging holes. It's like holes in a boat. Like you see those cartoons where somebody's plugging one hole and then another hole pops up and there's water yeah. coming in. And they're just plugging holes instead of actually repairing them. And I think really it is a spending problem. And they could they could really solve this with some intelligent and difficult decisions they need to make. But I also want to remind people that, yeah, people are moving out of the state and the city. But Chicago's really the country second city. Mm-hmm. You know, you got New York and then you have Chicago. If you look at the values of homes, investment properties, and just living in the Chicago area compared to New York, LA, San Francisco, or Miami, we offer more and we cost less. So for, sure. for those of you listening who are kind of poo-pooing Chicago in general, I still think we're very undervalued. I just think the people who are running um, the decision-making part part of the government. I won't get into politics here so that people don't get upset, but they're making some stupid decisions with their spending. Yeah. It's um, a, it's gonna, it seems to be continuing um, for some time to come. Yeah. Uh, it just I, – I, I think if you – you know, if you receive financial benefit from the state and the city, you should not be allowed to leave. That's a good thought. Yeah, you, know, you shouldn't be able to. You know, and you know, if, you know, I know the cost of living is gone, but if you're receiving funds from you know the state or the city, you have to stay there. It's in my um, opinion. I also think in general, and this is kind of. You think about any big city, right? Baby boomers are getting older. They're moving out of this area. They're moving to Florida or someplace warmer. Some people are getting older, and we got a lot of old people in the area. And I'm not just saying this is a joke, but we're at that transitioning phase where a lot of people are like, hey, you know what? I'm retiring. I'm moving down to Florida, right? Johnny, what do you think about, and I'm going to throw back to Cotter after this, what do you think about this rising interest rate thing? I've seen a lot of my buyers start getting a little bit nervous about the fact that interest rates are rising. What do you think about that? I think it's... um I mean, they're going to go up. This is, they're very low right now. They have record lows. So if they go up a little bit, you know, it's it's happening. But it's kind of forcing people to buy now instead of waiting. I've seen some people that said, oh, maybe I'll wait six months, a year. The market seems a little high. But the cost of waiting to see if the market goes down a little bit, but then your interest rate's going up, it, it doesn't make sense. So it's kind of getting those people that, maybe would have waited for a little bit they're uh they're actually pulling the trigger now so it's um you know it doesn't make sense to try and play the market when your interest rates are going to be higher later no matter what yeah how about you connor what do you think because you're did we talk about the rate envy uh topic before that which is a uh what people have feeling like they've missed the bus on on the you know sub four yeah. Uh, interest rates. So there's a new thing out there. It's called rate envy, where you know, they feel like, you know, oh my God, you know, I didn't, I get, I, I, I'm looking at, you know, four and a half or four point seven five, and my buddy has a three point eight seven five thirty year fix that he got six months ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. it. You know, get over it. You know, and it's kind of like, man, I should have bought IBM at two dollars because now yeah. they're worth like, you know, a ten, you know, ten thousand dollars. You know, you, it still makes sense. They're still at historical lows. It's still tax deductible. Right. You know, um when you factor in inflation on top of it, it's the cheapest money that you can find pretty much in the world. Yeah. I So I, I agree with you. I always say memories are short. People have very short-term memories. So buyers say, hey, I, I don't want to buy right now because the rates are in the fours. And my, like you said, my buddy bought three three seven five or 3875 Guess what it was in 2006 in the 90s? You were, you know, 7, 8, 9%, yeah. sometimes in the teens. And what's the alternative? The alternative is go be a renter. And yeah. that doesn't make any damn sense. No. You know, re- rental rates are so high right now that it does not make sense to own a place, to rent a place, because A, you can buy with low down payment options and credits back for less money up front than it costs you to uh, your security deposit, first month's rent, second month's rent. Mm-hmm. 
So it costs less to buy. You can have loose credit scores, low down payment options, and you get a tax write-off. You get principal pay down. You get appreciation. All these things where when you're renting, you don't get. If you're renting and you're spending $2,000 a month, your landlord every year gets $24,000 from you and you get zilch. Yeah. You get no tax write-off. You get no appreciation. You get no write-off. So what is the, what's the benefit? What's the alternative? And the rates aren't that high. And did you go on the, the rental piece that, that you, if you're renting now, are you thinking rents are going to go down in the no. future? I mean, yeah, if you could do it, do it. If, if you think you're going to time it again, yeah. like, oh, wait, I'm just going to wait till rents come down. We just talked about it. There's, there's, there's influx coming in. Yeah. So it, you have people leaving, but those are the people that are leaving their single family homes that are kind of like kind of high, I wouldn't say higher end, but in the upper incomes, you know, they're going for tax tax purposes, yeah. havens and stuff like that. You know, you're coming in. That, that's not the inventory that's going to be available to you. So again, super low interest rates, tax deductible, factor in inflation. It's the cheapest money you could get in the world, unless you're a bank. You cannot time any market. I said this to people. I was a foreclosure defense attorney, still am. And if all of us could have timed the market and when it's going to go up or when it's going to go down, well, we wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't be on this show right now. Hey, I'd be sitting on my tide, you know, down in you know, Puerto Vallarta. You know, I wouldn't uh, be. We'd have, to, we'd have to bring you <laughs> from in Skype. our split screen. Skype. Yeah, so Skype. John and I are working on a way of I, That's what I show. meant to say is yeah. I have right. to do this from my location in Puerto Vallarta. So what I'm hearing over here is you would fly us all down to do the show from there, margaritas. Because I'd be able to time when I get cheap airfare. Yeah, we um, love it. Love it. Yeah, <laughs> I got a connection. Everything. <laughs> I got I got a little connection. Yeah, um, John has a connection. Maybe yes. that can get us. Maybe can she get us airfare cheap? Um, well, when when we get done here, I'm going out to Put Arizona. On the spot. So I'll ask her when I get out there if yeah, she can perfect. hook us up a little bit. I don't even care about these two guys. Just <laughs> just your good old partner Mo at the wheelhouse. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Cheap flight. Don't worry, I'm trying to work on that whole timing thing. So yeah. I'll meet you guys down there. It's it's impossible to time a market, and all markets that go up come down a little bit, and every market that's down comes back up again. Again, you can't time it. So buy when it makes sense for you, and it just never makes sense anymore to be a renter. I'll tell you the one time I think it makes sense to be a renter. And it's when you don't know where you're going to be in the next year or two. If you know where you're going to be for the next three years or so, it makes sense to buy instead of rent. But I have a friend of mine who was in an MBA program, and he said, Mo, I don't know if I want to be in New York next year, Chicago, Miami, LA. Made sense to be a renter. Yeah. Johnny, you've had pretty good luck with renters. I mean, you've been working with some renters, and you're turning them into home buyers. Um, are you kind of seeing that same thing where a lot of the people who are thinking of renting now can go to buying because of the low rates and stuff? Well, with rents at an all-time high in Chicago and all these new rental buildings going up, um, you know, they're keep getting more and more expensive. And then, um, you know, if they don't have the perfect credit score, a lot of rentals, uh, you know, they, they don't want them there because it's so favorable for the renter to stay in and not the landlord. So landlords don't take people that don't have perfect credit scores, whereas you can get a loan for, you know, a place without a perfect credit score. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? So when you're going to, and I don't go to a lot of rental buildings anymore, is it 700 plus still? Like you really need that sort of credit yeah, score? Yeah, you need, you need at least 700. You need three times your income to, to, get, your, uh, to get the place. So, and they that's don't, crazy. yeah. And it, it was interesting, one, one client of mine, she had three times the score, three times the amount that she was making to pay her rent, mm. but they still, because it was a new job, uh, they didn't want to count all of it. And they said, well, you know, you're just out of college. We don't know if this career is going to go your wow. way. So they wanted her to have the full amount of the year in her bank account. What the hell? That to is, rent? That is awesome. Yeah. And so her, from a landlord her, standpoint, her a landlord. family <laughs> put in a month, like $42,000 because it was over $2,000 a month in rent. It was, it was like 3300 So but they put in the money there and parked it there for 30 days so she could rent the place. That to me is insane. I mean, uh, for sure, you don't have to have that sort of um, credibility as a borrower to be a an owner. I mean, Ryan, yeah, you can touch on know. this. With minimum credit scores, FHA is like 580, conventional yeah. is in the low Six, sixes. 620, yeah. you know, 3% of your own you know, three percent down. That could become from a gift. You know, one month reserve post closing. I mean, they're making you know home ownership incredibly easy. Yeah. Um, so it's it's, and I also see like from the from the landlord standpoint, like you know that they're requesting all this. You know, 
that's awesome because they're just it's just elevating the clientele for the rental part, right? Yeah. And so like I'm gonna start asking for I mean, I haven't been asking for that. You know what the problem <laughs> is in Chicago? It's the Chicago real estate landlord tenant ordinance. You hear the C R L T O. It's very favorable, unconscionably favorable to the tenant and really is punitively damaging good landlords. It was put in a place years ago to get rid of slum lords. That that was the, the idea behind it. But this whole idea of if you don't give somebody a security deposit receipt and then they can go after you in court and get their attorney fee and get double the security deposit, that's outlandish. And it's very strict liability. We There's a really big push to the Chicago Association of Realtors to stop a couple things. One, rent control. Two, make the CRLTO a lot more um, fair for both sides. But it's pushing landlords to have some really big expectations of their tenants, which should then push tenants to want to become homeowners. But Johnny, I'd never heard of somebody saying like 700 plus, you, you're you a new grad, so your job is not secure <laughs> enough, so you just can't, you, you can't live here until you put that much money in your bank account. It just doesn't seem like it makes sense. Yeah, lending, you would, you start day one, yeah. you know, or you'd have a signed offer, offer letter, letter, signed offer letter for your employment, and you can close as long as you're, first mortgage payment is after your start date. That's crazy. So Johnny, if somebody wants to turn from a renter to a home buyer, uh, what's the first step? First step uh, I would suggest always is to get pre-approved. Uh, you want to just make sure that all that's in order and then that'll also allow you if you do find the right place to be able to move on it right away. Um, you don't want to put in an offer on a place without a pre-approval uh, because they're going to ask for it and then they're not going to pick your offer if you know if you don't have the the finances in place so that's always the first step i suggest i agree with you and and i it's sometimes tough you know to ask your a lot of times when you're working with a friend to ask them hey can you give me a pre approval because you think you know they may feel as though you're questioning their ability to purchase a place but you're right you cannot offer on a place anymore without a pre approval Ryan, there's a difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification. Because I see a lot of these weird pre-qualifications where somebody just went in there, got their credit score pulled, but they haven't had the lender look at any income documents. Can you kind of explain that dynamic? Because I get really crazy when I'm a listing agent and I get a pre-approval. I just want to make sure it's the right thing before I take my home off the market. For sure. So the pre-qualification, just like you said, is somebody calling up, getting the, the credit check, getting generic information, um, the, the borrower, you know, eyeballing their income, telling you how much they think it is, yeah. which yeah, you know, most people don't study tax returns and stuff like that. So they, they sometimes think that they make more than they make, and sometimes they, they think they make less than they make. So you know, the pre-qualification isn't an accurate indication of really anything other than credit for the yeah. most part. Um, the pre-approvals where you actually supply you know, supporting documentation, your pay stubs, your bank statements, your tax returns, everything and anything associated with getting a full-blown pre-approval. What's nice about that is that, you know, just like John was saying, once you have that, then you're, you're ready to go. You can actually convey that to a, to a seller and say, hey, Mr. Seller, look, I have all my ducks in a row. And, you know, on your point where you have, you know, these conflicting pieces of paper, pre-qualification or pre-approval, we've had to now add on that other language, which is we have received all the income documents. We have all the, the asset documents. They've been run through the automated system, which is you know, an artificial intelligence you know, approval system used by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Right. And so this borrower is legitimately pre-approved. I know you have other pieces of paper that say they're pre-approved, but this one's actually legit. And we get a lot of more phone calls from you know, listing agents saying, you know, hey, you got this pre-approval. You know, we have to double check because everybody says they're pre-approved. We try to make an up on phone call as soon as that offer is made to tell people like, hey, this is the difference between our bar and maybe somebody else. Like they ha I put it in the letter just so you know, but I'm telling you as well. We have all their documents. They're ready to go. They can close in 15 days. You know, you'd be crazy not to take this offer. And in this environment, this market right now where you know, it's – I mean, it seems like every deal is a multiple offer deal yeah. right now. You know, that's what we try to do to give our clients a leg up. You know, and I recommend every real estate agent you know, listening to this, you know, get with your lender, tell them, listen, I want this language in there because sellers see this. Listing agents know what this is. Yeah. And then would you mind putting a call into a listing agent as soon as we present this offer just to answer any questions? You know, Get us to the top because there's so many good offers out there. We need a leg up. Just don't sit back and wait for the contract to come in. You know, Hey, you're my lender. Let's, let's fight for this property with our client. I love that you do that because that really helps take a deal to the next level because you're right. There's 
any good property right now that's attractive has multiple offers. And if you don't have a lender that's willing to do that or put that language in, in change your lender. Give Ryan a call. Language a and call. call. Language and call. You, you got to make it a – I had a, a multiple offer situation where the client's – we we did all that, and they put together a letter with pictures of their kids in the offer. Yeah, to get it accepted, we got it accepted. Yeah, and like I saw the contract come over, I was like, "Hey, look, it's your kids! Oh, they're so big now." And it was a nice letter, you know. Please accept our offer. The letters work. So my uh, good buddy Doug, um, he just him and his wife are buying a place right now, and they put together the coolest postcard um, that showed kind of why they love the house, you know, their hobbies, why they see themselves in the house. There's a picture of them, and it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but he didn't put a hobby that he loves racing cars. He didn't want to come off like, <laughs> oh, race car driver. But I'm going to tease him because he put, gar- Doug, if you're listening, I think he was. He put gardening in there, but not racing cars. So we're going to tease you a little bit there at the track. Yes. So um, I love that. That call makes a big difference. Johnny, um, real quick, um, how – are you seeing a lot of multiple offer situations too? Yeah, so I just uh, helped my friend. She purchased for the first time. She had been renting for years, and um, we got her pre-approved. We got her a letter um, that said eleven days to close. We are fast tracked. She's gone through underwriting already before we even, you know, like before we even started or wrote up the offer. She got this pre, you know, pre-approval, but that stated in there that this was fast tracked. She could close in under two weeks. So I got a call from the seller's agent and she said, I've never heard of cross country before or this old that guy. Are they good? Are other offers from guaranteed rate? And I said, you know, look at what it says. Like we have, we've already underwritten it. It's ready to go. She's, you know, she's there. There's three conditions, you know, so we won a multiple offer situation, not by going over ask. We were still right, right at ask price. Someone else was too, but just saying that we had all of our financing in order and she was ready to close quickly. I can't tell you guys how many times I've won multiple offer situations because the selling side has trusted my team more than the other person. So your team includes your realtor, your lender, your attorney, you know, everybody working together. So if you have a great lender who will make calls like you did, Ryan, or like your guy did and have the right language and you have a realtor that's easygoing and can make the seller and their agent feel comfortable that really when i'm sitting as a selling agent when i'm selling a home as a listing agent that to me means a lot um so i'm glad you guys are both doing that johnny any advice i'm going to change topics for a second because i think we're running out of time which is crazy uh this went way too fast any advice for somebody who's a new realtor because i know we have a lot of new realtors in our office i know a lot of people that are my facebook friends they become realtors they add me on facebook any advice for somebody starting out who wants to in a year be successful like you and just their take their career to the next level I think uh, consistency is key, Um, kind of just showing that you're willing to go that extra mile, Um, you know, just be able to do whatever you have to do at the time. I covered showings, I did open houses, you know, I did things that maybe didn't seem like they'd pay off right away, but that uh, actually did, and I just kept doing it. And so just showing up, being there, being consistent, you know, I had a friend that called me and said, hey, I know a lot of real estate agents. Um, but you know, I knew you'd answer this call. I knew you'd be there because I see that you're there every day. You know, you're always working hard, um, just preparing. And I also try and, you know, build systems in place to automate things. I try and make sure that I'm never doing things the same time twice. That takes forever. So I'm, you know, just building your business, being consistent, um, making sure that you show up and that you're present and, doing those little things that don't seem to be paying at the time, but they'll, they'll eventually get you where you need to be. I mean, that's the key of a business owner. You hit it right on the head. You're investing your time and your effort for a future gain where a lot of people who fail at business want the success tomorrow and they won't do the things that might suck right now that give them that benefit in the future. And uh, great advice because you've been extremely successful in the last year. And I know I made a bet with a realtor in our office, if you're listening, he bet me, but then he wouldn't take the bet because I was serious about the bet. Um, he asked what I thought about Johnny's growth in the first year, and I said, I'll, he goes, will you bet me $10,000 his second year he'll be a top producer? I said, deal, done. And then I was like, make the bet. And then he didn't make the bet, so bet's still on if you want to make it, but he's probably more nervous to make that bet with me now. 
seeing Johnny's growth, but congratulations on everything you've done this Thank year. You. It's uh, I can't wait to see what the next two, three years have for you because you're going to just knock it out of the park and kill it. How about you, Ryan? Because you've been a very successful guy in your business, and we've had you on before we spoke about all the crazy jobs you've done. You were a cowboy. You were down in Mexico. I still want him to come in a cowboy hat once. So we're going to have him <laughs> back on in his cowboy hat. But you've done so much to grow your business. Um, any advice for somebody who's newly getting in, either real estate or mortgage or any business at all? It, there's no there's no like super secret to it. I mean, we just keep on saying the same stuff. You know, you, know, you do the same thing over, over and over. You, you know, you're consistent. You show up every day. You get that mentor, you know, that person who is going to like, like Main Street's you know, great because you're basically like their, their mentor for all the new age. So you, know, you go to Main Street, you have a mentor that's you know, walking them through, encouraging them, telling them about mistakes they've made or mistakes that you've made so that they don't have to make them. That, I mean, you, you get those three components and you know, just stick with them it's it's pretty hard to mess up i agree i mean i love it it's if let's take it out of real estate for example and say if you own a coffee shop if you didn't show up every day and open the door and work hard day two day three less people would be coming to your coffee shop i think what most business people don't get is you got to be consistent every single day and you can't skip a beat reason you guys are successful is you're so consistent every day you're doing the right thing and you're working hard um and i love that i think uh real estate is in general, a very simple thing. It's just not easy. But I could equate that to all of business. And Once you figure out what it takes to be successful, it's simple, but it's not easy to be consistent. So mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, one shout out I forgot to uh, to make, John, is Jesse on helping with these cool signs. I keep looking back and forth. I'm very jealous. I'm glad they're in front of me because I can stare at them and I, I don't have eyes in the back of my head, so I can't see behind me. But um, these signs are really, really cool. So shout out to your buddy and Thanks, uh, Jesse. A viewer of the show and a buddy of the show, Jesse, for putting these cool signs together. I might actually get one made for Main Street, too. These things are really cool. One, one last thing I wanted to say. I guess I take for granted. I don't even think about it sometimes, but surround yourself with the right people. Um, Mo's been there for me. He's always, you know, he's my jujitsu buddy. But uh, you have the right people around you, and they're trying to get you to succeed as much as you want to succeed or more. Um, him taking a bet on my success you know things like that the people around you they see that you're putting in an effort and time and they want you to succeed as 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 much as you know family all that i i think my mom's threatened family members if they didn't use me <laughs> you know like things like that you you get the team around you and the right people around you and you know you uh you multiply your chances of being successful oh i mean he made a brown guy blush and turned red <laughs> in the face there thank you buddy no i I do mentor a lot of people and I feel better about success when I see other people that I'm trying to help become successful than even my own because it's a reflection on me trying to help them out. And I learn more from people that I'm working with than I do from anything else. I, Our team at Main Street is just incredible. I love going in there because everybody is just trying to help one another reach a level of success and it's giver's game. You just all help each other and teamwork really makes everything work. Just like we said, when it came to the real estate rumble, I found a team and a family in the rumble too. You know, I got my main street team family. I got Dodd Kalaw, Tim, our new uh, attorney Ali. You know, we got a family there and it's great teamwork. But man, at the real estate rumble too, come Thursday night, we we're all buddies. We were trying to help push a event that we were all passionate about, but the teamwork and camaraderie that pushed it to uh, a successful event was incredible. So um, surround yourself, like both of you have said in the past, with an incredible team. John, we're like out of time. I see on my thing it's 3.59, so I think we hit the hour-long limit. We should make these things like an hour and a half long because I could keep going on and on and on because these things run out too quickly. I want to keep on going about the, the video behind the scenes of like what happened. Like oh, pictures of like I was talking to Greg about like how disheveled he looked like, and I had like two phones, and I said, hey, can you go take this downstairs? You know, and he's like, no, uh -uh, I'm going downstairs. <laughs> well, I mean, it would have been so cool. I mean, poor, All right, I'll go downstairs. <laughs> poor John was trying to get everything set going, but if we had one video in there, I mean, I was in jeans and a t-shirt and then just sitting at the Park West desk on, the, on Teresa's computer. You were running around. Greg was on the phone, and then I had to switch into a suit because we had to run downstairs, and I literally got changed in the Park West office while everybody was there. They were just turning the other way. Yeah. We were throwing our suits on, you know, um, and they were – Amazing, and and that whole team effort was was un un unbelievable. Oh yeah, we're actually we're going to have Teresa on. Uh, I reached out to her because she was so fantastic, and she wasn't able to make it today. But within the next couple of weeks, yeah, what a I gave her a hug at the end of the night again. I was hugging <laughs> everybody. Everyone yeah. was getting hugs. All all of Park West, um, their staff to just let us set up shop in their office and come up with a solution, and then and change and, and actually yeah, change change change, change, change. There. <laughs> and give us. Um, 
to, to love the charity enough to let us get to the finish line and support us the whole time was incredible. So shout out to them. Thank you, Park West. They're an incredible venue, great staff, and uh, great teamwork from everybody. So I think we are all done because we're out of time. Next week, Wednesday at 3 o'clock, please tune in again to Wheelhouse. Guys, share us, like us. Um, tell your friends about us. I think I just did a rhyme there. Share us, like us, tell your friends about us. That was off the cuff. We love the support. We can't thank you guys enough for tuning in and uh, just shooting John and I messages of love and support. We love doing this. We hope you guys are enjoying it. We definitely are. Tune in next Wednesday at 3 o'clock for another Wheelhouse. Thanks, guys. In three, two, one.